<laughs> As an announcement, stick up your ring. <laughs> so anyway, that was pretty cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, we we. <coughs> oh, we got. Wait a minute, we got somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. You got a microphone up there, you know. Father, we lift up Cindy, and we thank you for healing and blessing and strength. So you'll restore her completely. We commit her into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. Frank brought this up in Sunday school. We were talking about Thanksgiving, and I thought, well, this is a good one to read. Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to his name. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. Uh, so let's, let's be thankful today. Lift your name on high, Lord, I love to sing your praises, I'm so glad you're in my life, I'm so glad you came to save us, you came from heaven to
just bless us so much and we're so thankful for you. You are beautiful beyond description.
stand in awe of you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. We give you all of our thanksgiving, Lord. We're, uh, we owe you so much, Lord, and we're so grateful, and we thank you, Lord, that you are always working in our lives for good. We may not see it, what you're doing at first, but, oh, Lord, in the end, it's always good. It's always good. We've got a we've got a quick announcement. Okay, so tomorrow Monday at Wilson School, I have a basketball game at five. Anybody who wants to come, come. All right. Yeah. All right. Great. Is this gonna work? No. It's on. It's on. Huh? Can you hear it now? How about that? <laughs> Miracles never cease. <laughs> so everything's pretty new up here. Never used to know what they meant when they say a cow looking at a new gate, but uh, that's kind of what we're doing here. So, I'm going to jump around all over the place today. I'm going to wait till the roar stops. Yeah, I'm talking about you guys. You guys ready to listen? <laughs> I bet they talked to you like that at camp, didn't they? At least the guy that was here would do that. He'd just yell at people. Well, um, I'm going to go to start with Acts 27, 21. We talked about it a little bit in Sunday school. And I just kind of thought, this is right down my alley today. Well, this backstory behind this is uh, they were taking Rome, taking Rome, taking Paul to Rome, 
and uh, they ran into a hurricane. And the hurricane blew the ship around for, I don't know, 14 days or 21 days, I can't remember, but a long time. And they were in a little boat being rocked around by the storm and had puked all they could do and there wasn't anything left and now they're just sick to their stomach and wishing they could die. And after the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, he told them not to go. He told them to wait till spring. Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage. It's hard to keep up your courage when you've been vomiting for two weeks. Thank you. I agree. And there's nothing left in you. And you really are, would like to die. Would like to have the boat just turn over and drown and die and be done. Keep up your courage, he said. And they're thinking, right. Because not one of you will be lost. Well, you know, even... Even when you're in a bad place, in a bad situation, and you're pretty sure you're going to die, somebody says you're not going to die, makes you look up a little bit. <laughs> Keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel, an angel of the God, our God, of the God whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me. Well, that's an important thing to know. Whose I am and whom I serve. Who do you belong to? Oh, you need to know. We belong to Jesus. And it's Jesus whom we serve. Whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. That's what this was all about, getting Paul to Rome, to stand before Caesar. And God graciously has given you the lives of all who sail with you. <clears throat> so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. I believe God that it will happen just as he told me. I'm taking God at his word that it'll happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. You know, Paul had something that we all have and all need to grow it a little bit. Confidence. He had confidence. Because he knew who he belonged to. And he knew who he served. We need to know. When the chips are down and you're in the boat and you're throwing your socks up, you need to know. One time I was still in med school and my mother called me and said, your grandmother is deathly ill. And I thought, well, are you doing CPR? Are, is she breathing? Does she have a pulse? Is she alive? What, what do you mean, deathly ill? She goes, no, 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 no. I said, what? She's throwing up. And I go, oh, you mean she's so sick she wishes she could die? She goes, yeah. I go, okay. Hey, I got to go, Mom. <laughs> I don't know if I got up that quick or not, but it was like she wanted me to fix her over the phone, and I wait a couple of years. Hang on to that thought. We'll do it, but no, she was okay deathly ill. So these guys were deathly ill. They wished they could die. But Paul had confidence because of it's a relationship. Who he belongs to. His confidence, his trust, his faith was because of who he belonged to. If you go over to Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 35, chapter 10, 35. So don't throw away your confidence. It may look pretty bad. You may be in a mess. But don't throw away your confidence. What does confidence mean? Confidence means free 
and fearless. You are freely speaking. You are fearlessly speaking and acting. You have confidence. When you walk in the room, you are confident. Some of you are too young to remember Barry Switzer, but there used to be a Tulsa Surgical Club, and they would get together once a month and have some speaker come in and eat dinner at some place and listen to the guy speak. Well, I was there one night when Barry Switzer was the speaker. And he walked into the room, and here's a room full of surgeons. And I don't know if you know this, but surgeons have a little ego. You may not have ever known that, but there's about as much ego as that room as you think it could stand. And in walks Barry Switzer, and they all became like little kids. He filled the room. He just came in, didn't say a thing. He just walked in, and everybody in the place went, <gasps> and came over and wanted to talk to Barry because he had confidence. He had a lot, you know, he'd done some things. He had confidence in what he'd done. That confidence is okay, but that won't do you any good in the midst of that ship when you're throwing up. That confidence goes away about the second time you vomit. Sorry I talk about vomit so much, but it's kind of an important thing. Anyway. We have confidence because of who we belong to and that he belongs to us. You speak, we speak openly, we act openly, cheerfully, with courage, with boldness, with assured attitude of having won and still winning. You know, our, we've already won and we're already winning. We're going to heaven there is nothing bad in the, our future. Oh, we're gonna, all going to lose this body someday. Die. But that just means we step right into heaven. You see that confidence. So it says first that it will be richly rewarded. It says don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. And that confidence is the title deed to heaven, to Jesus, to the kingdom, to our fellowship with him. It's the thing we hold on to. It's yours. We have, you back up to verse 19 in this same chapter. It says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, Jesus is the way. We have confidence. You see, in the Old Testament it says that our God is a consuming fire. They couldn't even come to the mountain, Mount Sinai, where he gave the law without being burned to death, consumed. But because of Jesus, we have confidence to enter right into his temple, right into the place where he sits by the blood of Jesus and crawl up in his lap and throw our arms around his neck and his around us. Because we have confidence. We don't have to shrink back in fear. We don't have to wonder if we're holy enough. We don't have to wonder if he knows about that bad thought we had. Yeah, he knows. But he has been faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, God doesn't forgive you because he's a nice old guy. God doesn't forgive you because he's that old Santa Claus guy. No, he is faithful and just to forgive you because he applies the blood of Jesus. Justice has been satisfied by what Jesus did. God is just, and Jesus paid the price that we owed. Jesus took the punishment that was due us so that we can come into his presence. He is faithful and just and faithful to apply that forgiveness that justification to us. That's a powerful forgiveness. That's a forgiveness that stands time. Oh, he is merciful. He is kind. He is full of love. And his loving kindness endures forever. But that's not why he forgives us. He forgives us by the blood of Jesus. And that only. You see, that price of redemption 
paid for our sin and paid for our deliverance. And we've been bought with that price. And that's why we belong to him. Whose I am and whom I serve. He paid for us. He purchased us. We are his. We belong to him. Confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through him, but we come by believing in the sacrifice he made. We come by new birth, by the Holy Spirit. And we are confident of that, aren't we? You need to know the answer to that question. This one's going to be on the test. I'm going to give you the answer. Yes. Yes. We are confident. If you're not confident, seriously, you need to look into this book a little more. You need to pray a little more. You need to make sure you know that you've been redeemed and who your Redeemer is and what price He's paid for you. You need to know. You need to have confidence because the devil will try to run you by fear. The devil uses several whips, but his best one is fear. He will whip you and run you and drive you over a cliff if you'll let him. We don't need to have any fear because we are confident of who we belong to and where we're going and that he holds us and will never let us go. Verse 23, it says, same chapter, it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Let us hold on to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful these people back in the bible day were losing their lives right and left if they claimed the name of jesus if you claimed the name of jesus it was a visit to your own cross let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess that word hope is also that greek word that is translated here as hope also means confidence We have confidence. Don't throw it away. You know, the world's hope is a hope so, maybe so. If you bought a lottery ticket today or yesterday, and I won't say you're stupid. I I won't because my mom would be mad at me if I called you stupid. But we got a fireplace outside. You know, I'll start that fire, and you can just throw your dollars into that if you want to. You don't have to go buy a ticket. Am I getting on people's toes here a little bit? We don't trust in luck. We trust in the Lord God Almighty. We trust in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. We don't trust to luck. We trust to God Almighty who orders your steps and holds you and will never let you go and will never forsake you Why would you trust in luck? Why would you trust in superstition? I'm not going to use that S word. Unless I need to. (laughs) Oh, I'm stupid too. Don't worry. We're all stupid in one way or another. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope, confidence we profess. What does it mean to profess? Confess and profess are exactly the same word. Profess, confess, there's no difference. It's the same Greek word. And it means we say it out loud. Who do you believe in? I believe in Jesus, the Son of God, who died on a cross and paid for my sin. We profess it. We confess it. 
with our mouth so that our ears can hear our own voice saying it. It goes into your brain a whole different way when you hear your voice saying something. You need to say it out loud. When you read this, you need to read it quiet and you need to read it out loud to yourself. Your voice is very important. Your voice is the thing that separates you from other animals. Language. A lot of people say it's your thumb that makes you different. Ah, monkeys have thumbs. You know, that's not that big a deal. What's a big deal is your voice. Your ability to praise the Lord. Your ability to ask Him to come into your heart. Your ability to receive Him as Lord and Savior. Confidence. Don't throw away your confidence. And we hold unswervedly to that hope, that confidence. <laughs> you see, our hope is a confidence that it's done, it's paid for, it's on its way, it's in the mail, you can track it on your computer. When you order something from Amazon, you expect it on Tuesday. And if it's not there on Tuesday, you're hopping mad, you're calling them, you're getting on there and sending them messages. Hey, where is that thing? Because you expect it to be done. You're not hoping it's going to come. You are betting on it. You are planning on it. You are strung out to get it there. We ordered some little boxes for up here, and they were supposed to be here Tuesday. Jim ordered them. They were supposed to be here Monday or Tuesday. They got here Friday. So part of what took so long was waiting on those things. They were a little late. Amazon might be late a day or two, but God won't be. God is never late. We might think he, you, we might wish he'd hurry up, but he's always right on time. He's always there when the time is right, when the time is appropriate. Right on time. You see, the hope we have, the confidence we have, is that it is a done deal. We belong to him, and he belongs to us. Our name is written in heaven. We're on our way. It's paid for. You don't have to wish for it. You can use the word hope if you want. Hope's a great word, but don't use it like the world uses it. They hope so, maybe so. That's not hope. That's wishing. We have hope. We have confidence. Well, we talked about Paul in the boat. Let me talk about one other guy who I think had confidence. In Mark 10, 24, tells the story of blind Bartimaeus. I don't think blind was his first name. I think he was just Bartimaeus and he happened to be blind, you know. Well, there he was sitting outside Jericho begging. He was blind from birth and he had his begging cloak on. You see, to be an official beggar back then, you had to be authorized by the priest or the rabbi or the Pharisee or whoever was running things in your area. And they gave you a cloak that said you were authorized to beg, that you really were blind or you really were lame or you really were in need and it was okay. The priest had said, beggar, okay. And you'd wear that cloak. And without that, people wouldn't trust you. They wouldn't say you were authorized. So there he was doing his thing. And here comes Jesus, leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. Big crowd following him. And when he hears the crowd and the noise, he starts saying, Who is it? Who's going? What is it? What's it about? They say, It's Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, he'd heard about Jesus. He'd heard about Jesus. He was that guy who healed the sick and raised the dead. He was that guy who cast out demons and made the blind see. Ooh, Jesus. I know about him. You see, he had thought about him enough that he, uh, when they said it's Jesus of Nazareth, he, he called a curious thing out. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. How did he know that? 
He is the son of David. See, he was calling him royalty. He was calling him the Messiah. He was calling him the anointed one. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They told him to shut up. Quit bothering him. Shut up. The more they told him to shut up, the louder became his screech. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus heard him and said, call him. Call him. They went to him and said, cheer up. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you and me. He is calling you all the time. If you've met him and you're born again, that's great. But he's still calling you to come closer. There's more. There's more. There's more joy. There's more peace. There's more presence. There's more power. There's more love. He's calling you. Come. He wants you to hang out with him. He wants you to learn from him. You say, well, I, I'm saved. What, what, do, what do I need? Oh, there's a lot you need. <laughs> and he wants to give it to you. We were talking about it this morning. We, we need to hang out with him. We need to talk to him all day long. You talk to yourself all day long. You do. You hear people. Sometimes they do it in their head, and sometimes it's out, and you get to hear it. Walking by Walmart, people are just talking. Blah, 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 blah. We talk all the time. Talk to Jesus. Let Jesus be your best friend. Because he is. There's no other friend that sticks like Jesus sticks. Talk to him. Talk to him all day long. Well, I think I'm going to get a sandwich. You want a sandwich, Jesus? Nah, I'm pretty good. Oh, okay, never mind. We talk all the time. We talk to that guy driving that car in front of us when he pulled right over in front of us and made us slow down with the old, you bumbity bum bum, don't we? And then sometimes we repent a little. Probably not enough. Talk to Jesus. He's calling you. That book that Janine reads, that devotion book, Jesus Calling, he is calling all the time. He wants to give you more, to fill you up. Well, he got up. First thing he did was throw off that cloak. In his mind, in his heart, he says, I ain't no beggar anymore. Uh uh. Jesus is here. He's calling me, and I'm coming. You take one step of faith toward Jesus and he comes running to you. He came to Jesus. So Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Boy, that's the question of the ages. What do you want? Here's the king of the universe. Here's the creator of all that is and ever will be, the sustainer of the universe. And he says, what do you want? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe a pocket knife? I, mean, I don't know. What do you got? He's come to Jesus. That's the way we treat him. Well, I don't, I don't need anything. I got it all together, God. I, I don't need you. Thanks. See you later. Come, come again if you have time. No. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you peace. See, he's got a plan for you and a future and a hope. He wants to prosper you. He wants to give you a life full of glory and blessing and peace. The past is gone. You come to Jesus and the past is gone. You can't even go back there. You can't go back if you wanted to. If you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, the old has gone. The new has come. So what do you want, Bartimaeus? Oh, I want my sight. Jesus said, go. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight 
and followed Jesus along the road. You suppose he was telling everybody about it? I bet he didn't shut up for the next four days. Hmm? I was blind, but now I see. Do you need sight? Hmm? Are you blind? Are you blind to the things of God? Are you blind to his presence? He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. Old Bartimaeus wasn't a beggar anymore. He came with confidence. He came with hope. He came with faith. All those things work together. He got up, threw off that cloak, and didn't look back. We have confidence. We have hope. If you go in Hebrews to the 11th chapter, the first verse of the 11th chapter has something to tell you how faith and hope interact a little bit. He said, now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Of what we hope for. You see, the eyes of faith are hope. Hope is what, how we look at things. We hope. We have a hope of our home in heaven. Faith is the being sure of that. Sure is a word that means the foundation. The building is built on a foundation, a sure foundation. It's the substance of the building. It's the rocks below the surface. Being sure of it is a solid thing. We can walk into that building know it's going to stand, knowing it's going to stand up. It's the substance. It's the reality of the building. Sure. We're sure of it. And then he says, lost my place here. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, you guys probably reading it and I'm not yet. There I am. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Certain means you've tested it. You've sent it to the lab. They've done an analysis. They cut a piece off and put it under an electron microscope. They burn it up under a fire. They found out what was in it. They did the, <laughs> I can't even say the words anymore. All the tests, that's sure, it's certain. It is what we say it is. They've assayed it. It's pure. We're certain. It's certain of things we cannot see. That's what faith is. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. We can have it in our hands. We can feel it. And we're certain of what we do not see. That's our hope. That's our faith. That's our confidence. We know it. We have it. It's ours. It's done. Our friend Jake Clay, young man, <clears throat> spends a lot of time here, but he's on his way to the NFR, National Finals Rodeo. He's number 14 in the world. He's a mighty good roper. And he's got some confidence in his ability. You have to have it. And if he wins that, it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be right now a thing unseen. Hadn't happened yet. So he doesn't have it in his hand, but he's hoping. And he's not just hope so, maybe so. If I went to the NFR and said, I'm going to take Jake's place, uh, bring me his horse, I'm ready to go. They would go. <coughs> <coughs> They'd call security and have me roped up and taken out. Because I would be hope so, maybe so. 
But he's got hope based on experience, effort, practice, all those things. So he's hoping. But it's not in his hand yet. Our hope is already in our hand. It's already there. You can't see it with these little peepers, but you can see it with the eyes of faith. You've got it. It's yours, and it's not going away. That building's not going to fall down on me, is it? I heard a little creak back there. <laughs> Michael, you guaranteeing that building for me? <laughs> I have hope that that building will stay up. <laughs> yeah. It's done. It's a done deal. We have confidence because we know it's already happened. We have confidence because we know it's ours. We have confidence because it's in the bank. You got enough money to pay for this? Oh, it's in the bank. It's in the bank. It's done. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to fret about it. And if you're worrying and fretting about it, stop it. <laughs> I mean... We have no right to be afraid. Now, if a lion came in here and growled, I expect we'd all tremble. That's not what I'm talking about. But even if the lion ate us, we're going to heaven. And I don't expect that lion to hardly get through the door before everybody started rebuking him in the name of Jesus. And the poor little kitty would lay down and purr, roll on its back, you know, how they do. No. We got faith. We got hope. We have confidence. Let me read you two other witnesses to this idea in Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrote this a long time ago. 29. Thank you for asking. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. People think God's out to get us. He's not hurting you. A tornado is not an act of God. We need to quit slandering God. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We've already got that hope. He's talking this was back then. He's talking about the future. We're the future. To give you a hope and a future. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you. Ever play hide and seek with a little kid? They want to be found. If you don't find them real quick, they'll poke their head out. And, they, and you want to be found by them also. It's not really, a, we don't play it too hard. We want to be found. We want them to find us. We want to find them. Jesus will be found by you. It says seek. It makes it sound very strenuous and arduous, but it's not. If you look for him because he's right there, he's looking for you. He'll find you. You'll find him. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back from your captivity. Are you captive to something? Have you got some chain on you that you can't get loose from? He will set you free if you'll let him. He who the Son sets free, not just some slave, not just this or that, but the Son, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. If you're bound up, if there's something you can't get rid of, he'll set you free if you'll let him. And then one more, Jeremiah 17, 7. This is describing the guy with confidence and with hope. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence, that's the word, isn't it, is in him. 
whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water. You know, we walk around, but we're planted in the Holy Spirit. We're planted in the love of God. We're rooted and grounded in the love of God. We're like a tree, but we're a walking tree. And that water follows us, and that love of God follows us and nurtures us. We're like a tree planted by the water. You ever seen where trees are in the prairie? They're usually, there are not too many of them out in the middle of the pasture. They're by the creek or they're by the pond where there's water. You'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Confidence. Confidence. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. We can rest in him and trust in him. Father, I thank you for your word and your truth. And I thank you that we can have confidence in you, that we can rest in you, that we can trust in you, that we can lay back in your love and know that you will never let us go, that we can rest in your presence. For you are the King, you are the Lord God Almighty, and your love for us never ends. There is no limit to the love you have for us. And Father, as we step out into the world, into the life that you've given us, let us remember who we belong to and who's inside of us and who it is that we serve. Help us keep our eyes on you. Help us keep our thoughts on you. Help, our keep, help us keep our conversation in you that we can walk with you and talk with you and abide in you and remain in you all day long every day. Help us, hold us, teach us, strengthen us. And show us what things you want us to do that we can spread your love to other people, that we can share your love, minister your love, give your love, your peace, your presence to other people that are hurting or lost or injured or whatever the cause, whatever the situation, that we can be confident as we speak your name, bold as we proclaim the love of God. Help us. Strengthen us. We commit it all into your hands. We commit ourselves into your hands, and we thank you for your blessing. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. That's us. And who has confidence in you. That's us. We're blessed. Blessed of the Lord. Help us as we go. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.